At least 17 nations around the world have programs dealing with what many people consider a truly barbaric and unnecessary form of warfare. Yet there remains a faction who take the world as it is and note America would be at risk without them. And there is in effect no way to remove them from the face of the earth. Our guest continues his quest to make the world safer from weapons of mass destruction. A recipient of the Right Livelihood Award called the Alternative Nobel Prize for his work eradicating chemical weapons. Former staff member of the U.S. House Armed Services Committee, Paul Walker. Mr. Walker, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, good day, Ed. Nice, nice to hear your voice. Thank you. What exactly is the significance of the U.S. destroying these, these last remaining stockpiles of chemical-laden artillery shells in Pueblo, Colorado? You know, it's, it's, it's really one of the ongoing major steps forward in the uh, uh, effort to abolish chemical weapons from the face of the earth. Uh, this is the eighth stockpile that the United States will begin to operate, uh, begin to destroy, operate the destruction facility, probably in the next uh, next few weeks now in Pueblo, Colorado. Uh, it's got 2,600 tons of uh, very dangerous mustard agent, uh, but it's a big step forward for the United States because the U.S. itself has been constructing this uh, facility for probably six or seven years now. And we've not destroyed any more chemical weapons uh, for the last three years. What about those who say, and here's the other side of the argument, I'm looking at a list right now, and I see countries such as China, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Libya, North Korea, and others who have substantial supplies of chemical weapons. It doesn't seem as if these countries are going to do anything whatsoever to rid themselves of it. Nobody can tell them what to do. So are we putting ourselves in a lurch if we're trying to do the right thing and getting rid of the weapons, but still with so many others out there that could be aimed at us? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a good question. But, you know, the Chemical Weapons Convention, the international uh, legal regime which, which abolishes chemical weapons and verifies the destruction, uh, now has 191 countries as member states. There's only five remaining outside of that. And you mentioned a few of them. It's Angola, uh, Egypt, Israel, South Sudan, and North Korea. Now, we know, we know that the North Koreans have a large stockpile, and they may be very well the last country to come in and join the convention sometime in the future. Uh, both Israel and Egypt are suspected of having stockpiles. But really, the, you know, what we've seen, in, uh, particularly in Syria, in the last uh, couple of years, is that you, cannot, you can no longer use chemical weapons as a military weapon. These are taboo weapons now. Uh, they've been really criticized and... And the militaries themselves, particularly the Russian and American and the European militaries, all of whom built enormous chemical weapons stockpile, have all rejected them. Uh, they're all building down their stockpiles, destroying them. But is it fair uh, to Russia say has, that there's? Is it fair to say though that there's a true black market out there, and no matter what we try to do in the legitimate countries, that there's going to be potentially metric tons of these that will still exist in the hands of bad guys? I, no, I, I don't think metric tons. I mean, I, I think you might find terrorist use, as we're seeing in the Middle East now with the ISIS, and, and we saw in Syria, potentially, uh, whoever is using chemical weapons in Syria. Uh, and we saw with the Aum Shinrikyo in Japan in 1995, but tons of chemical weapons are very difficult to produce, they're very difficult to stockpile, uh, they're very difficult to preserve, and even more difficult to, to deploy and use. So. I don't see any chemical weapons being used at all in the future, except in very minor instances. But minor is always relative. I mean, you could still see hundreds, maybe thousands of people killed with chemical weapons, but never on the on the you know the scale of what we saw in World War One, almost just almost a hundred years ago when we had ninety thousand people killed and a million injured uh, of troops in World War One with chemical agents. We've only got about thirty seconds left. How close are we to perhaps being? as clear of nuclear weapons on the planet as we can? You know, uh, the, we, we expect that within five, six, seven years, all of the declared uh, states parties, particularly Russia and the United States, will have their weapons destroyed. Then the question is to bring in Israel, Egypt, and particularly North Korea uh, into the regime, uh, destroy their stockpiles, and then begin to... Uh, begin to uh, examine chemical industry in the long-term future. Dr. Walker, you should be lauded for your work and the others doing the work as well. Let's hope that one day we can live in a world without these horrendous weapons. I thank you so yeah, much for you your time. Much. Please keep up the great work and we'll be in touch again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Bye -bye. From the mouths of men and women who seek to mold and shape the American way of life, in other words, pundits, politicians, pollsters, and the like, your chance to hear if anything they say makes a dent in your daily life when we come back right here on Bitcoin.